Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tim here, and it's still in Vegas. And uh, this is a warm day, but it's nice because it's cooling down now. And uh, recently, gosh, the buffets in Vegas are just superb. Uh, the M Resort was fantastic, and recently I got a chance to visit the Wynn. And uh, normally, I, uh, the Wynn really isn't considered the top one. The top one is actually right around here. This is Caesars, and inside Caesars is a buffet called Bacchanal, which uh, I think many have said it's, uh, is uh, Vegas' uh, best. But uh, gosh, the buffet at the Wynn with Juan and that massive seafood boil, they really stepped up their game with their seafood and caviar and again if you're at the wind make sure you go for the lobster tacos and topped off with a bit of caviar so a lot of people are saying you know how is the wind compared to caesar's and the bacchanal uh you know i'm not sure because they're pretty much tied up there so i think there's only one way to find out uh let's go visit caesar's bacchanal buffet uh and find out for ourselves thank you so much for joining uh come on let's get out of this heat and uh, go for a nice meal together. Come on, let's go. Thank you. All right. Nice to be out of the heat. And uh, I think this is just as I remembered it because I've been here before and uh, really grateful because uh, a while ago I got a chance to meet Grace Dent and uh, have a buffet together and a really kind person. And uh, oh, just as I remembered it, a lineup. This lineup isn't too bad. Uh, this is kind of early in the early in the day, and uh, I just need to get through here. Oh. <laughs> I have my ticket, and just like old times, but except with the lineup, oh, <laughs> maybe just one. But this is a short one. Hi, Shelly. How are you? Oh, very good. How are you today? Very good, and uh, not too much of a lineup, so that's pretty good. Okay. Say welcome to Bacchanal. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Thanks, Annie. I have been here but like uh, about a year or so ago, okay. so I can't wait to see what's new. Okay. And just as busy as it is before. Always. Okay, great, thank you. So this is very nice. Anna sat me at this wonderful table and I guess at a, for a table at a buffet, it's uh, three words, location, location location because I'm right here so close to the stations. This is right by the carvery and by the seafood and over there is a dessert section. So we are right in between the meats and the seafood and the desserts. I can't think of a better location and uh, I think uh, before we get started maybe a nice glass of bubbly and gosh Vince is fast and they are not stingy with the drinks but the sparkling wine first and cheers. Hmm. So I'm actually uh, kind of here during the brunch time and I did get a chance to visit this buffet in the evening yesterday and I got to meet uh, Izita where uh, she was helping me book and she helped me book right in between the straddle times of the brunch and the crab brunch so that I can enjoy the two and kind of pay the brunch price and uh, while I did see the dinner yesterday I think they have more uh, lobster or lobster claws and uh, more meats but for the brunch I think this is the uh, first phase of the brunch where you are limited with the seafood, but overall in the, in the next uh, 40 minutes or so, they're gonna bring out the crab and the other seafood. So this is really cool, the best of both worlds. Uh, come on, let's give it a visit and uh, let's have a nice buffet, come on. So I just need to get my uh, bearings straight. This is a day and I did some reconnaissance as I mentioned at night yesterday and uh, I think they are starting off with wonderful meats there. And there are so many stations and it is busy because I uh, just don't want to bump into people. But I'm going to visit the seafood station first and I can see people doing the same thing. It's always fun to take pictures and I can attest. So this is kind of the brunch section. Not too much seafood but behind there you can see they are getting ready for the next uh, 40 minutes with their crab brunch. And I think we still have an array of seafood here. But I think for the first round, we are going to hold off until they pile this up with crab. I think we're going to start with the meat section. So it is hard to know where to start. I think people are coming from this way, so I think we'll go to the end. 
Hey, Matthew, how are you? Good, how's everything? Good to see you again. Long time no see, and yes. I remember we were in that room with the BBC and uh -huh. filming. That was really cool. Doing very good. Oh, and congrats on your team for doing everything they're doing here. This is That's amazing. Right. Yeah, we were just recognized for one of the most uh, most uh, uploaded pictures and videos on Yelp in Las Vegas. I think I'm helping on, with oh, that, are? too. Yes, yeah. you are right now, yes. <laughs> All right. Very good. Oh, thank you, Matt. And the, the birria tacos look amazing. Right. They, they are always great, but a new item you, you might not have had last time you're here is salt and pepper frog legs on the Chinese station. Oh, wow. Try that. Yes. So frog legs, a little bit of fish, a little bit of chicken combined. Exactly. <laughs> yes, really nice. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Oh. Nice and crispy. All right. Well, thank you, man. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I won't keep you. Those birria tacos look so good, but I'm not going to go for them on my uh, first item because they need to go uh, on the last item because they need to be eaten hot. Uh, I guess we'll start in the middle. Okay, and starting off, I think we have a little bit of ceviche. So this is really nice, nice and refreshing. These are shrimp, more shrimp with a bit of scallops. And I think this is white fish and uh, a little bit of tang. Hard to choose, but uh, I think scallop wins me over. And moving on, because it is brunch, we have wonderful Latin American fare. Uh, this is a chorizo scramble. Uh, this is monkey bread uh, taken from Indiana Jones. Some uh, oatmeal. And when you're at a buffet, don't go for the oatmeal. And look at this. Again, this is brunch. So we have some pancakes, some waffles, and as good as a confetti pancake looks, I think the ube pancakes uh, will take the cake, so to speak. Hey, Aura, how are you? Can I get the uh, ube pancakes? Oh, sure. Oh, all right. Thank you, Aura. So it's always kind of nice to see what other people are taking. Hey, Andrew, what hey. looks good? This right here is so good. Look like at this. All right, red velvet. All right, nice talking to you, man. Nice talking to you, Andrew. Okay, and moving on, we have chicken fried steak. And there is no chicken in here. I'm just going to go for a little one here. And you can't have chicken fried steak without the country gravy, with the sausage, all doused on top. And now we have some salads. And this is nice. I like potato salad, but this is a smoked fish potato salad. Let's go for a little bit of this next to here. Okay, and we are nearing the meat section that we saw earlier. A lot of hardworking folks over there, over the thousand degree flame. And they're starting off slow. I see some creamy horseradish here. And that is a prelude to all that wonderful beef. Putting it here to be prepared. Oh, and look at this. They have the loco mocos and then a hog heaven type breakfast sandwich with the waffle as the bread. So I know this is brunch but I think there is room and a time for prime rib and brisket. Hi, Salvador. Oh, kitchen looks so warm. Is it? Well, the, the food looks great. Can I get a little bit of uh, prime rib and the uh, brisket? Oh, thank you. And then a fatty cut of prime rib, a rare one if you have it. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Salvador. All right, that is a mountain of meat and uh, maybe a little bit of sauce. A little bit of jus. Just a drizzle, maybe a little bit more and a little bit of barbecue sauce. And I see something kind of interesting besides the au jus. This is truffle turkey jus. So I think I'm going to give that a try, but I'll skip the turkey. Hi, can I try some of the truffle turkey jus? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. This is almost like a transaction at the cashier's cage and a little bit messy. That's okay. Oh, that's good. And if uh, you won't tell, I won't tell. And a plate of sauces. And my goodness, that cognac sauce is delicious. Mac and cheese. And I think we need a little bit of potatoes. But first I gotta wash the hands. Okay, and off to the potatoes. And this is Borsan potatoes, just a little bit. Only room is next to the country fried steak. And that potato is almost like a sauce on its own. And down the line, we have some elote, corned beef hash, 
some bacon and hash browns and scrambled eggs because this is breakfast after all. Then that gumbo looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna go for a bowl of that. Some hamburgers and I think more brunch items. I think that's pretty good for the first round, but to top it off, let's go for some birria tacos. And with the taco area busy, I think we will peruse what is before that. A little bit of huevos, rancheros, churros, I believe these are the best looking hot dog I've ever seen. This one I definitely need to go for. These are duck quesadilla. Over here, a little bit of plantain and a little bit of uh, chilaquiles. And I just recognize this is Jesus, which I've seen uh, years ago. Hi Jesus, how are you? You are so busy. The uh, quesadilla tacos look really good. Uh, as she says, uh, consomme por favor. Jesus, thank you. Oh, ladies first, ladies. Oh. oh, thank you, Jesus. A little consomme? Fantastic. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you so much. See you next time. Really good folks here. One or two years ago, just like old friends and wonderful consomme here and this is gonna be the first round. So this is quite a thrill. This is the first round and the food looks amazing. And as good as the food is, it's getting to meet all the great people uh, from uh, executive uh, chef uh, Matthew there. And uh, two years ago, I think I got to meet uh, Jesus and he's looking just the same and as good as ever and I think all that work, I need a little bit of a drink. Dr. Pepper is in order. Cheers. Very nice. And uh, the reason I got the taco last, or the quesadilla, is that I don't want it to wait. Let's give this a try. Oh, and you can see the braised meat goodness. This is hot and a lot of cheese, a little bit of the consomme. Oh, cheers. Oh, that is wonderful. The corn tortilla, nice and fresh and crisp. The braised meat just melts in the mouth and that wonderful cheesy goodness. Thank you so much, Jesus. Mm. Very good. But the next thing that cannot wait is the brisket. Let's give that a try. Okay, so we've got the prime rib and we've got the brisket. And from my angle here, oh, this looks succulent. The knife is barely needed. This is uh, the fat and the um, tendons all melted down. Give a little bit of dip in the barbecue sauce. Nice and meaty. It has cooled down a bit and that is user error. But the barbecue sauce, nice and tangy. Mm. Very nice. And again, before it gets any colder, let's try the prime rib. And I can tell that is really tender. I don't even need a knife. I think I can use a spoon Filipino style to cut this. So tender. And I have a little bit of au jus, but this is truffle turkey jus. And this is a cognac sauce. I gotta go for the cognac sauce with a little bit of horseradish. Mm. All right, go for the prime rib here. It seems like every place, their prime rib is getting better and better. Probably one of the best I've ever had here. So tender, perfectly cooked. It just melts in your mouth. And for this one, let's try the truffle turkey jus. Oh. This is getting scary because I think I'm developing a taste for truffles. So when you're here, definitely go for the prime rib and make a beeline to the uh, poultry carving station. Go for the cognac sauce and also for the truffle sauce. But I think to make the perfect bite, we can have a little bit of the chicken fried steak and I'm cutting at an interesting 
awkward angle here because the table isn't big enough. And then maybe a little bit of mashed potatoes. This is Boursin mashed potatoes for that perfect bite. Oh. That is such a comforting bite of goodness. Not only do you have the crispy, crunchy chicken fried goodness, which is not chicken, but you've got that wonderful sausage country gravy and that cheesy mashed potatoes. Mm. So nice. So I think I'm gonna finish this off, but oh, I haven't tried, or at least I don't have where I'm from. I don't have too much of a chance to try the gumbo, so I can't wait to dig into that. And I'm just gonna move my little friend off to the side. A little bit of rice, a little bit of gravy. Is this what they call etouffee? Not sure, but uh, let's give it a try. Oh. Rich, so much depth of flavor seafood and meaty goodness and you can taste the length of time it has cooked because everything is melding together so again really nice buffet here and i guess no matter where you go you can't really go wrong and cheers to all the great places to eat in vegas and all the hard-working folks there cheers to you I'm definitely saving that cognac sauce and uh, first round we're already at a good start but go for the prime rib. Definitely a winner and the other winner is the Quesa Birria Taco from Jesus. But if you come here, go for the prime rib, such a winner and the, uh, the uh, Queso Birria Taco from Jesus is fantastic as well. But that ubi pancake, nice and fluffy, that is nothing to sneeze at as well. And I wonder how Andrew is doing with his uh, red velvet uh, waffle and the duck carnita really delicious and you know what would give it even more flavor a little bit of the consomme drenched on the duck really good and i think with that i think we hit one o'clock and uh, thank you so much to izita for that little tip to pay for the brunch and come for the crab uh brunch time and look at this line back here which is from the seafood station all the way down to the buffet. Put out the craft cart over there. Oh, did they? Yeah. All right, thank you. It's really kind of Chef Matthew to come by and say that they actually break this line into two. The crab is over there, but they have another uh, annex section for the crab. So I think it's time to go for round two. Uh, hope you're hungry. Uh, I'm getting full, but uh, there's always room for crab. Let's go. So this is getting a little bit busy or a lot <laughs> grab the plates. So I'm definitely not going to rush for that line because here, this gentleman has the auxiliary crab cart here. Hey, Benjamin, this is like the best kept secret, a little uh, station for crab. Yes, sir. No lineup. Can I have some? Oh, thank you so much. So that's really cool. That probably saved an hour out of my time. And oh, look at this. So normally the drinks I would skip. Uh, this is strawberry kiwi over there, um, pineapple. Uh, and this over here is something that I have not heard of before. It's horchata, but it is ube horchata. And this is a frustrating tease because uh, they don't have any cups. But I guess if we turn the corner, there they are. Gosh, they are busy and with the uh, ube horchetta in place, uh, I think we're going to check out the Asian section and it is much more quieter in here because once one o'clock comes, everyone's out for the crab. And let's start over here. Oh, that looks really good. Always love a salmon and uh, seafood at a buffet or fish at a buffet is always a little bit of a hit and miss, but that's okay. We can find out. Some gyros. Okay, a little bit of polenta. This I remember, these are the meatballs and I think I can't say no to an arancini. And that is not the arancini, this is a croque madame. This is a missing arancini. Well, let's still go for this one here. It is really nice that they compose the little dishes. So you got every component all put together for you as chef intended. And this is more Italian food. 
some meatballs and some pizza from the brie and apple to i think this is a breakfast pizza after all it is uh, still brunch and i guess in vegas one o'clock it's still breakfast accordingly we have the breakfast items with the granola the acai fun to say and so far this isn't looking like the asian section because we have some charcuterie there starting with an array and a board of cheeses some nuts and a wonderful board of deli meats from the mortadella to the salami to the capicolo and of course the bread colorful array of juices and smoothies pineapple green and purple and a little bit of salad for health now we're talking this is a uh, i think this is a noodle station or some soup can't really say no to ramen but uh I think I'll save that for later because we have a wonderful fatty goodness from head to tail. Beautiful achun and I love this because they separate the meat with the skin. Maybe a little bit of fatty pork and contrast that with the crispy part. Oh, it doesn't come off but we'll take the whole thing and that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it with a little bit of sauce. Okay, and it does get even better because next to it, they have the lumpy as Shanghai and kind of the roasted pork in skewer form. And normally at a buffet, when they have Filipino food, is usually just the lechon. But here, they've got the uh, lumpia. Grab one of these. And these are the skewers. But I think we will wait for the fresh ones. And am I going the wrong way? Yes, you are. Oh, Look I'm sorry. Way. All right. I think we'll start from the other side and then I'll meet you back at the uh, Filipino section. And this is the Asian side. So I remember this section quite well. This is the one that you have to crouch down because everything is far behind the buffet table. All right, so got to go for a little bit of the shrimp right behind the veggies all the way in here. And while you can't see me now, I am crouching down. This is low. And as Chef Matthew mentioned, they have the new salt and pepper frog legs. And I remember having those. Let's give this a try. This is a cross between chicken and fish. So a little bit of surf and turf all together. A little bit of duck. And that looks so good, but that is too far to reach. Sweet and sour pork. Oh, fried rice. Some more crab. These are blue crab. And uh, I think while I like dumplings, I love a deep fried one right here. And uh, the quintessential authentic crab rangoon. And it's nice to kind of stand back up again. And this plate is full of crispy fried goodness. To counteract the crispy fried goodness, I think this is a steam section. Down we go. And this is some pork buns. More pork buns. And let's see what else we have here. Oh, the shrimp dumplings. And I think this is going to be the same as that. Oh, okay. This one looks really interesting. This is a flattened dumpling and it's actually very good. I think lots of shrimp and pork, so a little bit of steamed items. And now this plate is a dichotomy from the soft to the crunchy, but who can say no to japchae? These have got to be my favorite noodles. Nice and greasy, but in the best possible way. I might have taken too much. A little bit of short ribs, some KFC, and kimchi fried rice over there. And uh, this is the Japanese side. Okay, I do like this. The individually plated dishes. A little bit of, uh, I think this is octopus pokey. And this is salmon pokey, and you can't go wrong with salmon. And you also can't go with tuna too. And it's kind of funny in this light, the tuna looks like the salmon and the salmon looks like the tuna. And then, uh, oh, some sushi. Of all the buffet sushis, this one looks really appetizing, particularly the salmon roll. Just gonna grab one of these right over here. And that brings us back to the lechon station. And that's just as well because the plate is so full. Getting round two, it took a bit of time. And uh, I'm so glad I got that tip about the uh, crab cart. Uh, saved quite a bit of time and I can't wait to try this ube horchata. Wow, that is a really nice horchata. Refreshing, light and creamy, a bit of cinnamon, 
and a lot of ube, very floral and very nutty, just like some people. Cheers. Mm. And uh, it was really nice because um, I got a chance to visit the uh, other crab station, the seafood station there. But already, I think I have so much here. There's just no more room for the clams and the shrimp, which are ginormous. So I got a chance to come by in the evening. And the only difference between the crab brunch and the dinner is uh, I think the dinner has some uh, lobster claws and so forth. So pretty much the same. Only a few items difference and uh, really grateful for Izita to mention to pay for the brunch, come for the crab brunch at one or stay to the crab brunch at one. So really appreciative of that. And I think I got to try the arancini before it gets too cold or colder. It has been a while. Mm. But still very good. Nothing wrong with a crispy, crunchy rice ball with cheese and sauce. Mm. Very nice. And it's also a little smoky. And when I'm filming here, it's a little bit different than uh, having a buffet on your own because you tend to have everything much more fresh. But I don't think that salmon can wait any longer. Let's give that a try. And this is nice and rosy pink, perfectly cooked. And again, this is something that is kind of hard to do at a buffet. Nice and translucent, just flakes. Oh, very nice. I remember I kept the cognac sauce. I think that would go great with the salmon. A little bit here. With a lot of salmon. Oh, make sure you save your cognac sauce. I think I'm going to try that dumpling next. Nice steamed dumpling. This one is still warm though. Let's give this a try. Dumpling is full of filling with the pork and the shrimp. The pastry is very thin as it ought to be. The sign of a good dumpling. And a mouthful. Mm. Oh, how can I forget about the lechon? We can do this with our hands. This is nice and crispy. The most coveted part of the pig. Mm. Crispy and crunchy and fatty. That layer of fat at the bottom just explodes, but you need a little bit of the tangy sauce to cut all that richness. Oh, nothing like the good fat. And speaking of good fat, let's try the japchae. And this is noodles in the fat of sesame. I think there's a lot of sesame oil with the slippery, slurpy potato noodles. That is very tasty, but it can be really filling. But I gotta try the frog legs that Chef Matthew was talking about. The uh, salt and pepper crispy frog legs. This is a little bit of, uh, tastes like chicken and fish. Mm. And wonderfully cooked. Crispy and light batter on the outside, well seasoned and tender and succulent meat. Very tasty. And finally, we need to go on the crab or go to the crab because this is going to be messy. And look at the size of these crabs. So I think I'm going to save the uh, white meat for later. And uh, we'll go for the crab leg. And this is nice. They're all pre-cut for you. Little crack here. And now gently and carefully, hopefully, We'll get it all together and it's coming out, but it's breaking apart. So a little bit out, much better on this end. So if you're unsuccessful, that's okay because you have many, many opportunities to try. Let's try it on its own. Mm. Grab is nice and fresh. And I remember Chef Matthew was saying, I was asking him how much crab he goes through and he kind of hinted that that was a trade secret. And with the mountain and mountains of crabs they go through, 
he says they count in units of tons. So uh, pretty surprising. I think I'm gonna go for a little bit of the crab. And this time, instead of having it by itself or with butter, definitely go for the cognac sauce. This is a perfect dip. Oh. So next time, forget the butter, forget the uh, sauces, go for the cognac sauce. Really nice. So I have a lot more to finish off here and I'll take you back for the next course. Maybe it's another round of savory items. Maybe it's dessert. But in any event, I'll see you in an hour. Cheers. That was a lot of food. It's nice to see the buffet going very, very strong. I'm definitely gonna go for dessert. No more additional rounds. The sushi and the uh, poke bowl were, while delicious, it was a mistake. It was just too much food. And when you have a little bit more practice with the crab, you are able to extract the leg in full. So that's pretty nice. And of course, make sure you get the cognac sauce. And I'm just browsing the uh, dessert area. I'm just looking for a plate. So usually at a buffet, for the dessert section, they have the little plates, but here they have the big ones. And ironically, I was actually hoping for a small plate. Uh, so I kind of watch what I have, but let's see what we have here. So normally I would jump at these, but not after those rounds of meats and seafood. This is still kind of lunchtime and uh, my appetite just isn't as it should be, but let's see, they've got some s'mores delight some cupcakes, still a little bit heavy. And I remember they used to have something called the ube chiffon cake. I mean, hopefully they still have that, but oh, look at this. So some lovely cheesecake and something blue under an umbrella. Give this one a try. So this is a blue Hawaii coconut cake. And next to the coconut, we see some busy worker bees, which I will stay away from because upon closer inspection, it's banana cream pie. Just not a big fan of bananas, but I am a big fan of creme brulee and some strawberry shortcake, as well as some brownies. And they have my favorite. This is a Thai iced tea. And next to it is a gelato. And I think I have an idea. Let's grab a cup. And I think we might make a Thai tea ice cream float. I've had this before and uh, so it's not original. Hi Irma. Hi, how can are I? You, Very good. Can I ask for a favor? Sure. Can I get a small scoop of vanilla ice cream in this cup? Okay, vanilla ice cream. All right. I'll bring it in and I'll dump it. Okay. Thank you, Irma. How about like that? All right. Thank you so much. So really nice of Irma to watch out for cross-contamination. Yes. Good folks here. Hey, Deborah. Cheers. Cheers. So Deborah and I are doing the same thing. A little bit of Thai tea. Just a little bit, right? Oh, fill it up. Oh, fill it up. You're only here once. Oh, okay. okay. So my turn next. Right over here. Okay, there we go. So I might have made a mistake here getting the uh, Thai tea so early. I need to keep the balance. Let's see what we have. All right, a little bit of pastries from the egg tarts, Portuguese style cinnamon rolls, a little bit of muffins and more pastries. But this is what I'm after here. The sweet and light desserts, a little bit of tapioca. I think these are chia seed pudding right here. And this, while it looks healthy, should be tasty. A raspberry panna cotta, some cheesecake, and this is a vegan strawberry cake. And I would be surprised if strawberries were not vegan. Perfect time. This is coffee. This is Vietnamese coffee dessert. And what a nice way. A little bit of caffeine, a little bit of sweetness right here. And the plate is certainly getting full, but I think there is room for one more because on the theme of coffee, we have tiramisu in little cups. And I think that is all I can have, but oh, this is what I've been looking for, the ube chiffon cake. Let's see, we'll go for one. And that is it. And this is the dessert plate in all its glory. So the desserts here are as good as they are. Caesars always has a very nice dessert section. And before I wait too long, we'll need to have the Thai tea ice cream. And I think we'll probably need a spoon. 
little bit of vanilla, little bit of Thai tea. Very good combination. And if the ice cream melts, that's okay. It'll make the Thai tea richer. Mm. Almost like a Thai tea milkshake. And with that, I got to dig in to the Vietnamese coffee pudding. Oh, that is so thick. And one hand with the camera, one hand with the spoon. Let's give this a try with the typical wiggle. That is strong and assertive. Maybe a little bit lighter with the tiramisu cup. There we go. Oh, so light and airy and the chocolate fingers are just soaked up with that wonderful coffee substance and I'm at a loss for words and substance is the only thing that comes to mind. Cheers. Mm. I'm very curious as to what the blue is. Now they say it is coconut, but I think there must be a flavor because I don't think I've ever seen a blue coconut before. Cheers. Mm. That's not bad. It's okay. Very coconutty. But what I'm here for is that ube chiffon cake. And I remember last time I was here about a year or two ago, I could have three or four of these. And I suggest you get one or two or maybe three of these as well. Oh, very nice. And what a nice way to end the meal. And I'm going to finish up this dessert plate. So this is the Bacchanal. I guess one of the top buffets in Vegas. Got to visit the M Resort, the Wynn, and now the Bacchanal. You can't really go wrong with either three. And uh, please let me know which one would you, just, which one would you go, go to? From the M to the Wynn to Caesars. Thank you so much for joining. And it really is nice to come back after a couple of years and get to meet the folks again, like Jesus, just like it was yesterday, and uh, Chef Matthew and all the great folks here. So it's getting late in the afternoon and I think I've had all that I can eat and I still have some work to finish this up. So thank you so much for joining me. And until we see each other again, I hope you're keeping well. I hope you're traveling well and I hope you're eating well. And with that, cheers to you and yours. All the best.